in our van. That was the YouTube audio library piped into your ears via this realistic stereo cassette player. It's a beautiful day, and as you can see, we've integrated it seamlessly into our factory audio system. But enough about that, let's get back to the music on COVID 98.6. So when I got this tape deck, it didn't move. I had to take it apart, and it turned out to be a clear case of belt melt. Like bacon melt. Eh, a little different. But anyway, the belts had long since vanished into rubbery gunk, and I could tell, you know, kind of from the way it was left, you know, the path of the belt around the flywheel. Nice uh, metal heavy-duty flywheels there. You wouldn't see that in a newer deck. Three belts around that motor, and they also have to go around this pulley at the back and those two flywheels. And it all has to fit together. That was a pain to get it back together. And I even broke this little solenoid thing off there, flexing everything. And so I had to fix that too. That little tiny uh, wire, I had to solder a new wire on there. Of the, you know, that solenoid actually activates the auto reverse. So between that fix and the belt replacement, the only other thing this needed was just a quick cleanup and it was ready to go. So the SCP-25 stereo cassette player was one of the many player-only models offered by Radio Shack, both as part of these discounted system configurations and as standalone models. And in my opinion, this SCP-25 represents the peak of quality, after which uh, the bell curve began to flatten dramatically. By the early 80s, the industry, including Radio Shack, had moved most of their styles away from the horizontal piano key loaders, but they still had not updated their playback-only models until in 1983 they introduced the SCP-5, which added new features such as auto reverse and metal capability, but it still loaded like a car. It wasn't until the SCP-25 was introduced that their playback-only decks matched the look and feel of their standard cassette decks. But after that, it was all downhill for the playback only decks. Just kept looking cheesy and plasticky and manual controls and they never quite looked as nice as the regular ones. It also quickly didn't make economic sense to buy this deck since you could buy one within a few years of its introduction for just $20 more with either recording, dubbing, or some other features that this didn't have. So why not go ahead and get that? Feature wise, there's not much to say about it. It has soft touch controls and you can quickly rewind or fast forward by holding in those buttons. Uh, but it doesn't have a counter, it doesn't have music search, which would have been nice on a playback deck. Uh, but I guess it gets the job done. It handles chrome or metal tapes and has Dolby B noise reduction. What do you think about having a home tape deck in the car? Uh, terrible idea. Oh, thanks. Because we could get into a cra crash and it could hit us and kill us instantly. Oh, I don't know about that. Dad! Dad! So I could see that, that rewind feature being kind of handy if you're using this deck to uh, record files to a computer and you could go back quickly and it would fit nicely on a desk if you use it to capture audio. But I can't say I'd recommend buying this or working on it. Maybe back in the day, if you had already invested in a very nice single cassette deck, this could add dubbing really easily or if you're a church or school or something, you could have music. Well, that's about it. We hope you enjoyed this video. And if you'd like to see more videos of old tape decks and things, you can click on our channel name, ACB Memphis. See you next time for another awesome video. Bye-bye.